Hello, travel family, and welcome to the Tips and Trips podcast, where we explore various aspects of travel planning and adventures. In this episode, I'm going to be talking all about budgeting for your travels, whether that be a weekend getaway, a long-term backpacking trip, a resort vacation, or really any kind of travel that you've been dreaming of. This is not specific to one style of travel or location, so grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee if you so choose, get comfortable, and let's get started. As a professional travel consultant and former tour guide, I can confidently say that there are a lot of different things that go into making a trip great, and many of those things can be different for different people, but across the board, budget is really the one thing that can either make or break your time away, no matter how you choose to travel, because truth is, whether your budget is $1,000, $10,000, or $100,000, your goal is always going to be to stay within your budget. So the first trip that I ever planned in full from start to finish was actually before I worked in travel. It was a 30-day backpacking trip across Europe with two other friends of mine from high school, and we did not have a clue what we were doing, nor did we know much about the cities that we would be traveling to. And for a lot of first-time travelers, myself included, that ideal budget that you have And the travel plan that you have, things you want to see, where you want to go, for how long, tend to stay kind of separate at the start of the planning process, when in reality, all of those factors should be one and the same. So in my case, we each had a budget of, I believe, $5,000, give or take, for the 30 days. And I knew that we wanted to travel from London to Greece, but I didn't even start to consider how realistic that budget and itinerary combo would be until it came time to actually book things like accommodations and transportation. But what you really need to do, and what I should have done, is either allow your budget to influence your itinerary. So for example, if your budget is fairly low, be open to traveling to a more inexpensive destination, or allow your chosen destination and itinerary to influence your budget. And by this, I mean, if you have a very specific destination or itinerary in mind, chances are you're going to need to be a little bit more flexible on your budget, or you'll need to be open to finding ways to save some more money. Which brings us to the part of the trip planning process where we're actually booking things like flights and accommodations. Truly, one of the best places to save money during the travel planning process is on flights and accommodations, because these are likely going to be your biggest expenses. And the bigger the expense, the more wiggle room that exists on their end for bigger discounts. So as far as accommodations go, you can of course consider staying in hostels or camping in place of a more pricey hotel stay. But if you don't want to compromise on your accommodation type to save money, you can also ask about early bird booking discounts or package deals that include things like airport transfers, breakfasts, or dining as a bit of a bonus. I will often use third-party booking websites like Hotels.com or TripAdvisor to find my ideal accommodations, but then I'll make my actual booking inquiries directly with the hotels to negotiate for that best deal. And then the same thing goes for flights. Websites like Flight Network and Expedia are great for finding and flagging the best flight deals, don't get me wrong, but then I will go ahead and book direct with the airline whenever I can. Usually, they will have the best deal, but even if the price is the same, there's an ease that comes with making flight changes if you've booked through the airline directly. So if you can book direct, do that. Now, the last significant expense when you're traveling that I want to touch on before I get into the actual step-by-step strategy of making a realistic budget and sticking to it is your food, drinks, and activities. And these are things that I find are often overlooked in the budgeting process because they feel small, but especially if you're doing them every day, like eating and drinking, they add up really quickly. Eating out at restaurants, especially in a higher cost of living destination, can add up really quickly. So if you're trying to bring your budget down, definitely consider accommodations where you can cook some of your own meals or 
make plans to stop and pick up some snacks and things like that before a day out of exploring so that you can enjoy those things throughout the day. When I was backpacking in Argentina, actually, about midway through my trip, I went out and bought a small Tupperware container at a local convenience store. And for the duration of my trip, I started packing my lunches and snacks for hikes and for tours from the breakfast buffet at the hotels that we were staying at. And in most cases, the breakfasts at these hotels in Argentina were included in the price of the room. And any options for meals, snacks, lunches, drinks, things like that were much pricier when we were kind of out exploring on the trails or in smaller locations because supply and demand, they know that they're the only option. They can charge whatever they'd like. So this was something that ended up saving me so much money and basically meant that I was getting my breakfast, lunch, and snacks complimentary every day for, I'd say conservatively, nearly a month of my trip. Now, I know for a lot of people, the food and drinks are half the fun, part of the adventure, and I totally get that. I am the exact same. So if you're like me and you aren't often willing to budge on your food and drink budget and experiences, my rule of thumb is the further back that you go from the city center, main street, or like tourist beach, wherever you happen to be, the cheaper and more local and honestly often better food you're going to find there. You can also look for deals and discounts on tours and activities with more local tour operators, but I would also consider looking into the free alternatives to tours in the area that you're visiting, like enjoying hiking trails in the area or exploring local markets. Various cities and countries often also have free or low-cost walking tours if you want to do a little bit of research ahead of time. I know when we were in Mexico City in 2020, for example, we actually used a company called Cactus Free Walking Tour to do two tours of the city, one to check out the neighborhood where we were staying and just get a lay of the land when we first arrived, and then the second for a Mexico City food tour. Of course, the tours aren't actually completely free. You are expected to tip your guide, who in this case was a university student running the tours while they were in school, but both tours were the highlight of our trip, and now we look for walking tours like that in every city that we visit. Those guides are also great resources for recommending other inexpensive experiences in the area as well, so don't be afraid to ask for their recommendations, and in saying that, Don't forget to keep in mind how you're going to get to these spots, because if you book a free walking tour an hour from your hotel, you're still going to need to pay for your transportation versus booking a free walking tour in the area where you're staying and so on. So just something to keep in mind. But now that we have talked about the planning process and where you can save some money, what I want to do next is talk about the tangible things that you can do to get this plan done and successfully stick to your budget. So if you're wanting to take some notes, now is the time, but I'll also leave a free download in the description if you're listening on YouTube or the episode notes so that you can have this little summary on hand throughout your planning process just to make things all that much more easy. Simple. Simple is best. I'm here for the simple. So first and foremost, you need to determine your travel expenses. Make a list of the expenses you're likely to incur, including transportation costs, accommodation costs, food and drinks, tours, and activities, truly anything that you can think of that you might need to purchase along the way. Add that to this master list. Then you're going to want to research the cost of living in the destination that you're traveling to. Truly, this is often as easy as just Googling you know, cost of living in Bangkok, for example, along with the year that you're traveling, and then use that information to calculate how much each travel expense that you've just listed is likely to cost you over the course of your trip. I like to leave myself a little safety buffer as well by always rounding up and never down when I am estimating these costs. 
for expenses like accommodations and tours, you're also going to want to consider the season that you're traveling. If you're traveling in high season, include high season in your search so that you're getting accurate information about tour and accommodations at that time. And if you're flexible with your travel dates and don't mind a little rain, consider traveling in a shoulder season or low season to cut your budget down that way. Now, in some places, low season can be miserable. I'll give you that. But in other places like Costa Rica, for example, I actually often prefer the wet season because everything is green and lush and beautiful. And I love to go visit waterfalls and do rainforest hikes. So do a little research about your preferred destination in the low or shoulder seasons and consider traveling then if you really want to reduce your travel spending or if you want to just get a better bang for your buck. And then if you really want to take this to the next level, and I highly recommend doing this, especially if it's one of your first trips, use a spreadsheet to keep track of those expenses as you book them, as well as as you travel. Not only is this going to give you a record of how much you spent on this trip when planning for future trips, but during your travels, it's also going to help you to stay on top of your spending and allow you to adjust your budget as you go along. Now, very quickly, and before I close out this episode, I want to share one more important consideration. This applies to absolutely anyone who travels, but especially if you are in the process of planning your first trip abroad, and that is be sure to leave some room in your budget for unexpected expenses. And by unexpected, I mean medical emergencies. We don't love to think about anything going wrong, but Things happen and oftentimes, even if you have insurance, you'll need to pay up front before you're reimbursed or an unexpected expense can be more fun like an activity that you didn't plan for but sounds like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I will never forget right before I left for Europe on my first backpacking trip and I was laying out all of my paperwork and checking my bookings and my budget and my dad said to me, If there's something that you want to do that you may never have the chance to do again, do it. Don't think about the cost. Think about the opportunity. And that advice not only made a huge difference in the things that I did on my trip, but I would never even have been able to do those things if I hadn't left that room in my budget for unexpected expenses. So I hope that this has helped to show you that budgeting for your travels doesn't have to be super complicated or stressful. There's a lot to think about, sure, but it gets easier every single time that you do it. And planning your first trip, finding the best deals, saving money on food and activities, and creating that realistic travel budget is going to make it so that you can enjoy your next or first adventure without ever having to worry about overspending. So if you enjoyed this episode, I would love for you to take a moment to subscribe. And until next time, stay great, travel safe, and I will catch you again in the next episode of Travel Tips and Trips.